Okay, great. So today we're going to be covering assembly. So as of this point, you should have all your parts completed. So you should have seven parts completed. And those are the pin, head, base, piston, flywheel, crankshaft, and connecting rod. The next step that we have to take um, in order to basically bring all these parts together is called an assembly. So usually when we open a part, we have file, assembly, and drawing. So we finished everything we need to know for this class about parts. The second step is regarding assembly and how we bring everything together. So please go to Blackboard and download a zip file called the um, ASCII file. So does everyone have that on their desktop? Now there's two ways to unzip it. You can either right click and say extract files or you can double click on it and try to grab try to grab the ASCII file in here and drag it to the desktop. So you have to make sure that you're dealing with the unzipped folder, not the actual zipped folder. Okay? So if you open that folder, you should see that you have three parts, an assembly, and two video files. So what we're going for, if I double click on assembly 2, you can see that video. So I can see basically the result of this whole thing should be a video where I can simulate what's happening. So here's a rotation, explosion, then collapse. Okay, so that's the video we're going for. And we're going to create something similar to that in the V6 engine. I'll show you how the video is supposed to look like in a second. Okay, so how do we create that? Go ahead and fire up SOLIDWORKS. We're going to go to File, uh, Story Start Menu, and then SOLIDWORKS. Oh, it's not SOLIDWORKS. So go to File, New. So, so far we've been dealing with part, now we need to move on to assembly. So go ahead and click on assembly and hit OK. Now you'll notice that the interface is very similar to the previous, uh, to the previous standards that we've been using in order to create parts. The only thing that's different here is that the features tab has been changed to an assembly tab. And I'll show you the different features of that in a second. Now, here's, how you, here's the whole idea. We have all these parts and we need to bring them in. We need to link them together under something called mates. Now in order to bring them together, the first part they bring in is called the fixed part. This is the part you're going to build everything on. So for our problem here, right, we have three parts. We have a base, we have a pin, and we have a blade. So it makes sense that the first part that we bring in is the base. The same, at the same time, for your V6 problem, the first part that you need to bring in is also the base, right? the engine base, because you're going to build everything from that base. So that's why I was telling you, if your engine base have the pins, you know, those rods pointing downwards, then your entire engine is going to be built off in the wrong way. There are ways of fixing that, but we're not going to cover it in today's lecture. Okay? Now, if I go to Browse, and I try to go to the desktop where I have the file, okay, so I'm going to click on Base, and before I do that, You'll notice that I have an option here. This is called a filter. So here it allows me to either choose a part or an assembly. Now, considering I'm bringing in a part, it makes sense I click on part so I can see all my parts here. So after I click on base, I'm going to click open. And notice that it's still linked to my cursor, so I can still move it around. Okay? Now, once I'm ready to fix it, all I have to do is just click once, and it gets fixed. So if I grab it now and try to drag it around, I can't do that. Okay, is that clear? All right, so where do we go from here? One thing that we have to notice is on the bottom it, tells, it says fully defined. Now this is fully defined because we only have one part here. But when you have the entire assembly, we are actually aiming to have something that is not fully defined, right? Because if it's fully defined, then it means it cannot move at all. What's the point of having an assembly if I wanted to create a simulation of how it interacts if it's fully defined, right? So it's okay if on the bottom it doesn't say fully defined for the assembly only. For the parts it has to say fully defined, right? Uh, again, uh, one other thing that I notice here on the design feature tree, right before assembly base, there's, a letter, there's, a, there's the letter F. 
Okay, that stands for fix. That means I cannot move this part. This is my fixed part. Okay, and if I try to click on it and try to move it, it tells you the selected component is fixed. It cannot be moved. So it cannot be, you know, it's pretty clear when it tries to explain things. Okay? Now I'm going to go and I'm going to bring in my other components. So if I click on assembly, the assembly tab, and click on insert components, that allows me to bring in my other components. So if I click on insert component, then I hit browse, and I need to bring in now my rod. So if I click on assembly rod, open. Now avoid all temptations to put the parts over each other like that, and just put them over here on the side. Someone already did it? No? Okay. Now I'm going to do it again one more time. Insert component, browse, and I'm going to bring in my assembly blade and put it somewhere there. Are we good? Okay, great. So now in sketch mode, in order to link two lines together or two points together or two circumferences together, we used to call them relations, right? So we used to click on the first one, hold down the control key, and click on the second one. Now, in here we're going to do the exact same thing. But instead of calling them relations, we're going to call them mates. And you can see the paperclip sign over here. Okay? Now, how, how can we do that? For example, let's say I want to put this rod inside here. All right? That means I want this circumference, uh, sorry, this uh, surface and this surface to be concentric with respect to each other. So all I have to do, I just click on the first one, hold down the control key, and click on the second one. Notice what I did. I did not click on the edge. Because the edge is a completely different possibility. So if I click on the surface, if I click on both of these surfaces, okay, then I hit on the mate sign, the paperclip. Solvix will try to solve it as much as possible. So Solvix will recommend a certain mate that you need to do. So for example, in this case, it recommended the concentric mate. Well, that's exactly what I want for this case, but not every time that Solvix recommends something, you actually listen to it. Sometimes you want something different. Okay. Another thing that you have to notice is here it says face and face, so they're the same kind. They're not face and edge. They're not, you know, different uh, vertex and uh, and edge. They're face and face, so they're the same kind. Okay. Now remember in the sketch mode, I told you there's a symbol that you never use. What was that? Anchor sign, Anchor sign right? You do not use the lock over here either. So the equivalency of that anchor sign in assembly mode is that lock sign. Okay? Now let's go ahead and before we click OK, we before we move on, I could have this entire rod flipped over, right? So I can have this notch pointing downwards. So we used to deal with something like that in um, when we used to do extrude boss base, right? We used to have the arrow that we used to switch the direction in which we're extruding. The same thing happens here where it says mate alignment. So if I notice, if I play, ar uh, play around with mate alignment, I can see the different possibilities. Now, in both situations, they're still concentric. But it's really up to you to figure out which one really matches what you want to do for this problem. OK? Is that clear? Any questions? OK, now go ahead and click OK. Yes? Mm -hmm. Hit Escape and do it again. Uh, so let's let's hit check mark here and I'll come over. By the way, when you do mate, it's okay to check you have to click on check mark twice to escape out of the mate mode. Okay? You got it. Uh huh. Just that piece itself. So the question was with mate alignment, if you have other pieces linked to it, it's basically only that piece that you're trying to link. Now, considering this is a fixed part, right, it cannot move this. So it really depends on which part has less restrictions. Just like when we did in sketching, there was a situation where you can put too many dimensions. Now we also have a situation where you can put too many mates, so it becomes overdefined. So you just want to reach the enough amount to kind of define it, but not kind of go crazy over it. So you kind of want to have one fixed part? Mm-hmm. 
And that's why you build up you build everything from the ground up. Okay? Now every mate that you add will be actually added to this mate tree over here. So if I click on the plus sign, I'll be able to hover over concentric and I can see that relation that was created. So let's say you made a mistake in the alignment or you want to edit it or do anything like that. All you really have to do is just right click on it and you go to edit feature and you're back into that window. Okay? So do you see now, I, I'm hoping that you start to see how the flow of work in SOLIDWORKS is going. Anytime you want something, you right click on it, edit, right? It's usually the first icon. So you start to see all this terminology and getting familiar with it. Okay. So from here, what can we do? Notice that if I grab my, my rod, I can move it up and down, but I cannot move it left and right. If I try to move it left and right, it's basically rotating. Okay? So I try to move it up and down, which is really not the way I want it to be, right? I want this to be basically fixed in here, but all I want it to do is be able to rotate, correct? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, I can click on the inside face of the, of the base, and I can click on this bottom face of the rod. Correct? Now, if I click on Mate, notice how they snap together into location. Now, you're engineers, right? So SOLIDWORKS thought this is the best option that you want. You want them coincident on each other. Now let's consider both of these are actually made of metal. Is it a good idea if this is going to be spinning two faces really grinding on each other? No. So that's a bad thing, right? So what you need to do, you need to put some spacing in there so you can put uh, some sort of lubrication or grease. Correct? So what we need to do is we need to add some spacing here between the two. And the way that we do it is under the lock sign, there's a ruler sign. So if you click on the ruler sign or the dimension, I can specify a distance, right? So I can say, hey, the distance between those two is actually 0 0.2 inches, which allows me for some spacing in here. Notice how my piston is kind of like, sorry, my pin is hovering over, allowing me to put some grease in here to avoid friction. Okay? Is that clear? Yeah. Here? Uh, did you click on mate? Okay. Okay. Now notice that I could have 0 0.2 this way, but I could also have 0 0.2 downwards. So in some situations, it might actually jam them inside each other. So all you really have to do is just click on flip dimension, because again, SOLIDWORKS does not understand what you're trying to do from a solid aspect of, of, of materials, right? It's just solving equations. So flip dimensions, you can notice that I really want it to be floating over, not basically jammed inside of it by 0 0.2 inches. Any questions so far? So go ahead and click on check mark. And if I do that and I grab my, my piston right now, or my rod, um, I can basically move it around. And the only thing I can do is I can spin it, which is exactly what I want. Is that clear? Yes. You have to click on the ruler sign right before it. Okay. Notice now that I have two mates added here. So I have concentric and distance. In case you add a mate that you don't really need, go back and delete it. Okay, adding more mates is like adding more dimensions that you don't need. You can't just add dimensions just because you want to make it fully defined. Right? Okay. Preach it. Okay. So now we need to add this, this top blade over here. All we really have to do, if I'm going to click on this face, hold down the control key and click on the top face. This is a perfect example where let's say you did not follow the isometric view that I gave you and you end up with something different. Well, you can add mates to make things parallel to with respect to each other, correct? Or you can make them coincident with respect to each other. So they're aligned. So if I select both of these, 
and hit mate, you'll notice how they get aligned, right? Although it was vertical, now it's horizontal. So I selected the top of the notch and the inside of the square here. Okay, and I want them coincident with respect to each other, so I go ahead and click check mark. Another thing that I can do is I can click on the edge here. Okay, now I want to bring this in here, right? I want to bring them together. So I'm going to click on this edge. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to make it a little bit different. Instead of faces all the time, I'm just going to click on edge, turn it, and click on this edge. Okay, so notice how I selected them. I did not select this edge. Look at that. I did not select this edge with this edge. If you did that and you hit mate, look what happens. The blade is offset it. But that's okay. I can fix that. How can I fix that? By using mate alignment. Right? So I Notice that it will actually throw it off a bit, but notice how it actually now it's aligned. So I can grab this, I can drag it back, and I can see how they're aligned now with respect to each other. Is that clear? Yes? Okay, go ahead and click on check mark. Now, one other thing that we have to make sure that we do is, okay, notice if I grab the rod and turn it, I'm gra I'm ha the blade is also turning, but that's some sort of black magic, right? How is it connected? So what I have to do is I have to link them together. So I'm going to click on this, on the outside circumference or outside surface of the cylinder, and I'm going to click on this cylinder over here, considering that they're consenting with respect to each other. I'm going to hit on mate, and notice how they get aligned with respect to each other. Okay? Now if I hit check mark twice again, and I grab the the rod and I try to turn it, everything turns with it, nothing's flying, it's fully, uh, it's perfect. Any questions? Yes, no? No? You got it? What? You like this part? Okay. Yeah, once you do this, then it's pretty fun. So you should have no more than five mates. Okay? All right, great. Well, now what we have over here, I'm going to call it my mini assembly. Now, how can we understand the mini assembly in terms of your, your V6? Let me pull up the video for you. I will tell you what not to do in a second. Do not do that music and that intro. All right, so here's here's our. It sounds so nostalgic with the music. It's like <laughs> sound like a uh, what do you call those like trailer narrator in the movie? It's like coming soon, a V6 movie in 3D. Uh, so one of the things that you'll notice here is that we have six pistons. Sorry, six pistons, six pins, and six connecting rods. So it'll be really annoying to bring all six of those, right, six times and try to mate all of them, right? That's really annoying because it's going to take you a lot of work. So what we need to do is we need to simplify what we can do. Well, we notice that, hey, if I create this entity here, which is the connecting rod, uh, pin, and piston as one entity, save that, and bring the entire entity in six times, that will save me a lot of trouble because that mate's already there, everything is already functional. So I'm going to call that my mini assembly. So what your mini assembly there is formed from is the connecting rod, piston, and pin. Okay, connecting rod, piston, and pin. Okay, great, no one's writing it down. Perfect. So wait for it. Um, so then what you need to do 
after you do that, so let's say this is our mini assembly. And we just finished our mini assembly. The next step in order to actually complete the full assembly is we have to test if we even did this right. What happens if our dimensions are not correct? What happens if the, the size of the piston is not correct or anything like that? Or there's some sort of interference or an overlap? My mates are not working correctly. How do I check that? Now, if I come here to uh, under evaluate, and I click on interference detection, <coughs> and I hit calculate. So evaluate, interference detection, calculate. Everywhere there's an intersection, it's going to light up like a Christmas tree. OK? And I can see here that it tells me that I have one interference. OK? Now, what that means that your dimensions are not correct. You made up numbers just to make your sketch black. Right, and, and trick me into making sure that your sketch is fully, is fully black. But really, your sketch is not fully defined because your dimensions are not correct and they're overlapping each other. So what you can do is you can, uh, or what some students do is, they tend to hit on ignore interferences. And then they say, OK, great. If I click on interference detection, calculate, Eli would never find out. The only problem is on the bottom here, it tells me one ignore interference. <laughs> So you're busted, OK? All I have to do is I just come here and say, show ignore interferences, unignore, check mark. There we go, OK? So do not hit ignore. If you have a lot of interferences, go ahead and hit ignore, because you will save me the trouble of actually counting how many interferences you have. It will just count for me. <laughs> for every interference that you, that you have, it's five points off. So I would make sure that, I mean, if you have two interferences, you're already down to a B. So I would make sure that I won't have any interferences. OK, these are just silly points to lose. Now, how do I, how do I deal with this? Well, I have to fix the parts. Well, I notice that my, uh, my cylinder here is, is probably bigger than the hole it's in, right? There's a definite overlap. Now, how do I find the, the size of that cylinder? If I click on measure and click on the cylinder, it tells me, oh, the diameter is 2.0. OK, I'm like, OK, 2.0. Now I need to reach the inside, this hole. OK, I can't reach it, so I'm stuck. So I don't go and open the part, because that's just too much work. What I can do is I can right click on that rod, and I can click on the third icon that says Hide Components. OK, now this will come in handy when? When you're trying to do your engine, you have the base, right? you have the crankshaft, you brought in the six mini assemblies, and you're trying to line up the pistons and the piston holes. What happens is every time you turn it, trying to line them up, the engine base is in the way. So what you can do is you can hide the engine base, but notice I did not delete it. All that I did is notice how the icon here changed from solid yellow to kind of like grayed out. So all that means is it's still there, but I can see through it, so to speak. So now I can click on the on the edge here, and I can see, oh, the diameter is 1.75. OK? So if the diameter is 1.75, that means there's a definite overlap of 0.25. So I need to deal with that. So there's two methods that I can do in order to deal with that. Well, first, let me bring back my, the rod over here. All I have to do is just right click on it from the design feature tree, and I click on the second icon called Show Components, and you can see it. OK? Now, I need to fix them. I can either make this rod smaller, or I can make the base bigger, correct? Now, for your V6, you don't just make up numbers to make it happen. OK? You have to follow the dimensions that I gave you. Now, the way I grade, to tell you the truth, and, that, and the only way I can grade so fast in this, and by fast, I mean like three weeks, uh, is I actually have a list of masses. So if your mass does not match my mass for the parts, then there's definite difference. Okay, and I trust my results and I dock you points off. So okay, makes sense. So we need to fix that. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna right click on it. First icon called open parts. I'm gonna click on open parts. And I can see that my part is in here. Now all I have to do is go ahead and check my dimensions. 
So right click on the part and click on the first icon. Okay, now I want to make this hole bigger over here. I'm going to right click, edit sketch, and notice that it says 1.75. I'm going to make this 2. Just like you, you do normally, it's under a cut extrude one, so just like you normally edit the sketch. Okay, then I hit on purple arrow, so it just got changed. And if I hit on X, not the top X, the bottom X. If I hit on X, yes, save, yes. It will be automatically updated in here. Okay? Yeah. So did you change the diameter? Okay, just close it. We're basically just closing it, and you're saving. You agree with SolidWorks? Yes, save, yes. So you just you edit the sketch. You right click, edit sketch. Okay. Are we good? So now let's do an interference detection one more time. Interference detection, calculate, perfect. No interferences. No ignore interferences. This looks good. Okay? Now after I'm done, I feel this is good. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save it, key idea, in the same folder. Okay? Do not be neat. Okay? Do not create a folder called Parts and another folder called Assembly. Save them in the same folder. So you should have one folder that has 10, 10 files. I'm going to tell you what those files are in a second. Okay, so seven parts so far, one mini assembly, so you're up to eight. So let's go ahead and call it mini assembly and hit save. Save. Just agree with SOLIDWORKS every time it pops up. Any questions on that? Well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you about those in a second, but you want to put them in one folder. Don't do like subfolders instead of subfolders, okay? And only give me the files that you want me to look at. Don't give me like crankshaft version 1, crankshaft version 2, crankshaft final, crankshaft final, 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 okay? Just give me the ones that you want me to look at. I will look on the first one, so I just need 10 files, okay? Any questions so far? All right, so did everyone save that as a mini assembly? On the top here, it should, it should read mini assembly. Okay, now go ahead and close that. I know, I'm telling you to close it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that you're paying attention. There we go. <laughs> yeah. The funny part is the morning class listen to the, to the same videos. So they're like, you just left the mic for 15 minutes and you were answering questions. You never answer questions in our class. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to hit new. Assembly, OK. Okay, so now what we just created was that mini assembly. Now we need to bring in six of those. Okay, so six of those we need to bring them in because we just created this connecting rod, piston, and uh, pin. Now, in order to bring those in, I'm going to hit on browse. And notice that if I try to go back into this folder, I can't really see it because my filter is set to part, so I want to make sure that I change my filter to assembly. And I can see that my mini assembly is here. Okay. Hit open. Now imagine going through this process six times. That's pretty annoying. Doing it six times, import, import, import. So what I can do is, do you see that pin over here? I'm going to click down the pin, and then all I have to do is one, Two, I can click. 
and I have all six of them at one time and hit escape when I'm done. Okay? Questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just do it again and click on the pin. Or just delete whatever you have right now and repeat it. Insert component, browse, bring them in and click on the pin. Can you ever make your mini assembly like your fixed base? Your mini assembly like your fixed base. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, the first one that you bring in is fixed. Yeah. Okay, but f for your V6, you know, you're not going to run through that problem, but because the first one that you bring in is your base. So when you're building your when you're building your V6 engine, you're building the base. You bring in the crankshaft. And remember that crankshaft one size is 0 0.55, the other is 0 0.5. So make sure you align them along the right holes on the base. After that, you bring in the connecting rods which is the mini assembly, so you bring, you put two per section, right, because you have three sections, so you put two per section. Now, a, a big question that everyone asks me is, what is the, the distance between them, right? What's the distance between the two mini assemblies on that section? I don't really know, and you don't really know, because it really depends on where you're going to put them in the holes on the top, okay? So what I would do is I would just connect them, I'm going to show you how to make them flexible in a second, and then you line them up with the head, and they should automatically line up, so I won't put a distance there. Okay? All right, so from here, notice if I click on the first one that I brought in and I try to click on the blade, it doesn't really move. That's annoying, because I just spent all this time trying to make it move and try to add all that functionality to it. So for your mini assembly, what you're going to have is if you bring in the piston first, and the piston is the fixed piece, then the connecting rod can pretty much swivel all the way around. Now, if you bring in the connecting rod first and you add the pin and the piston to it, then the piston can, can pivot on the connecting rod, correct? So you have two possibilities depending on what part you bring in first. But in either situation, they need to be flexible. Otherwise, how do you think this movie is going to work out? How do you think this movie is going to work out if they're not flexible? Because notice how they're always pivoting along, their pi along the pin. So it definitely needs to be flexible. So in order to do that, what we have to do is every mini assembly that we bring in has to be flexible. So on the side here, I should see negative signs. So I'm going to make sure that all of them are closed. And I'm only seeing the mini assembly as a total entity. Okay? So notice if I click on it, I see the entire thing. I'm not clicking on the individual parts. I'm clicking on the entire mini assembly. Okay. I'm going to right click. And there's a, there's a sheet here with a hand on it. It's called Component Properties. Go ahead and click on that. Okay. One more time. Right click on it. So what are the options that you actually see here is that the icon for the mini assembly is a yellow box or a yellow block with a green block attached to it. That means it's fixed. You have to make it flexible. So right click on it. Click on the sheet with a hand on it. Okay, and we want to switch it here on the bottom where it says solve as rigid. We want to make it to solve as flexible. Okay? And then we're going to hit OK. So now when I did that, notice how the icon changed that the green block is detached from the yellow block. That means it's flexible. And if I try to grab that blade and turn it, now it regained back its functionality. You have to do that for every mini assembly that you bring in for your V6. So you have to repeat that process six times. No, you cannot click on all of them and do it once. I already showed you a lot of tricks to save time, so stop being lazy. Okay? Are we good? 
Great. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. I don't really care about anything from here other than that. I just wanted to show you how to make it flexible. So don't save. So close that. By the way, if you didn't finish all the parts for today's homework, you have to finish them anyway, right? Because you can't finish the, the engine without finishing the parts. Right, okay. So let's go to File, Open, and we're going to open that mini assembly. <coughs> so File, Open, Mini Assembly, not Insert Component. So close the previous file that you had. And what I want you, what I'm showing you right now is something that you'll be doing for the final assembly. Okay? So any questions up to the final assembly? Up to this point, you should know how to do all, all that up to the final assembly. So all the parts, seven parts, a mini assembly, and a final assembly. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here when we look at the video is it's actually see-through. Because otherwise, you could give me a V6 engine that has a flywheel spinning on the front, and I won't even tell if you have anything from the inside. Right? I know someone's already thinking of that. Okay? So what you have to do, you have to make it transparent. And the way we do that is we're going to right-click on the part, and the fourth icon, it says Change Transparency. Okay, and notice now I can see through it. The only parts that I want to see transparent are the engine base, and the engine head. So those are the two parts that I want to see transparent. Okay? Now from here, what can we do? Well, you have to create this awesome video so you can share it with your friends on Facebook and tag everyone with it. And tell, you know, tell everyone what you've been doing for the past three weeks. So we're going to do the video. Well, one of the options of the video was to create that explosion just so you can see all the parts. Before you can start the video, you have to tell SOLIDWORKS, okay, where should, after those parts explode, where are they going to end? So that's why we need to do something called Exploded View. So if I go under Assembly tab, there's an option here at the end that's called Exploded View. Okay, go ahead and click on that. Here's how you do it. For the V6, you're only supposed to, I don't really care if you do this what I don't really know who drummer boy is um, but but what you notice here they actually broke apart they broke apart the pins and the pistons from each other I don't really care for that you can you can do the entire mini assembly as an entity I'll show you how to break it apart but you can do the entire mini assembly as just one piece now we're gonna click on the part and it's gonna highlight in blue then we're going to see this Cartesian system. We're going to hover over the green arrow because we want to move it up until our cursor changes into a two arrow. And then we're going to drag. Don't drag too much. Just drag enough so it's, it's actually exploded. And you'll notice that that option over here that I just used is called Exploded Step 1. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the base. Click on it, hover over the green arrow, and move it down. Okay, if you decide to go inside parts of a mini assembly, all you have to do you just scroll here on the bottom. There's an option called Select Subassembly Parts. You put a check mark on it. That means you're able to click on the pin, and the piston, and the connecting rod separately and break them up separately. Okay, any questions so far? So go ahead and click on the check mark, and there we go. Yeah. You have to click on drag. I think it's a Mac problem. Okay. So now a lot of students freak out here. Like we spend the past three hours trying to fix uh, fix our mates and make sure that they work fine. And now you explode everything. This is again a visual representation. In order to bring it back together, just right click in an empty space and click collapse.
uh, to explode, you just click on Exploded View. Okay? And to collapse, you just right click and collapse. It makes sense that you right click and explode. They just don't have it that way. <laughs> it makes too much sense. Okay? Any questions so far? All right, great. So now we can start the video. On the bottom, there's an option called Motion Study 1. Okay, so if I go ahead and click on Motion Study 1, that will open a video editor in order for me to create my animation. If you do anything in this video editor and you want to change it, it's very difficult to change. What I would recommend is you just right click on Motion Study 1, you click on Create New Motion Study, and you delete the old one. Okay? Now, how can we do that? All right, the first thing we need to specify is we need to put a motor on this so in order for it to spin. So that's the first step we need to do. So you notice that green option here that's called motor. Okay, so if I go ahead and click on that, and then the motor is located in here, but it really is applying the force on this rod. Correct? Now for your, for your engine, you're going to put the motor on the flywheel. The flywheel has that notch that's going to drive the crankshaft. The crankshaft is connected to the connecting rods. The connected rods will the connecting rod will pull on the pins, the pins will pull on the piston. And that's how everything moves. So one motor on the flywheel, everything should move with it. Okay? So on the side here, I'm gonna select rotary motor. I'm gonna select the speed to be about fifty RPMs. Do not go crazy with the RPMs. Two major cautions here. If you go crazy with the RPMs, your computer might crash and it might destroy your files. So make sure that you save before you try to experiment with this. And that's number one. Two, when you're trying to when you're trying to do the if I go back here, if I try if I try to go back to model, when you grab the flywheel when you're done and you try to move it because you're going to see that everything's moving with respect to the flywheel and try to test it, I would do the interference detection at least six six, six or seven times, okay? Because as those pistons are going up and down, there might be no interference here, but there might be interference on the bottom. So usually I, what I do is I just grab it, spin around a bit, and, and test it when I grade. Now, you might get really excited that you might grab the flywheel and sp start to spin it really fast. What might happen is that solders might not catch up with you, and the pistons, instead of being up, they will actually pop down outside of the engine. So it becomes an external combustion engine, not an engine. <laughs> okay? That's my joke of the day. Okay? So you have to make sure that be nice, okay? Or save it, back it up somewhere else, then go crazy. Okay? So don't, because once they pop up, trying to get them back in is a, is a real hassle. Okay? Usually what I try to do, if you show me that, I just grab it and try to force it back in like a couple times. If it doesn't work, I'll tell you, tough luck, do it again. Okay? So let's go back to motion study. So we're going to add the motor, we're adding it to the rod, over here we're going to specify 50 RPMs, and we're going to hit check mark. So notice that something was added. Now your entire video should be no longer than 15 seconds. I do not want to see feature introductions, I do not want to hear music in the background, 15 seconds, okay? So I have, have 120 engines to grade. So I just want to see the video. Make sure that you know how to do it. Done. M move forward. Yes? Uh, do you see that there's an arrow here, maybe? Do you see that? Click on it. it should open. Okay. All right. So we have that. Great. Now we're going to click on the camera wizard. It's a camera with like sparkles on top of it and a wand. So click on it, and here's your option to do a rotate model, explode, and collapse. If you did not create an exploded view a second ago, then those options will be grayed out. Okay? So you have to do the exploded view first, so in order to see this. Now we're going to click on rotate model next. Okay, we want to rotate it on the y-axis. Good. Number of rotations, one is good enough. Clockwise, I don't really care. Next. I clicked next too many times. Okay, duration. 10 seconds? No. 
Okay? Two seconds, good enough. Start time. Well, let's say I want to simulate it for about three seconds, and I want to start at three seconds. Okay? Hit OK. Finish. Notice that my total time here is five, so I'm still under five seconds. Now I'm going to click on the camera wizard again. Explode. Next. Duration two. Okay, good. Start time. Well, do, you, do I want to like explode while I'm rotating? Do something like artistically like that? It's up to you. Then let's say start time, I want to make it four seconds. So there's a one second overlap. Okay, then hit finish. You have to remember where your explode ended because you do not want your collapse to overlap with your explode. Right? Makes sense, right? Otherwise it will be nonsense. So click on the camera again. Collapse. Next. Duration is two, let's say, is good enough. Start time, six. Finish. So the entire video is eight seconds. It gets the idea there. Okay? Do not click on play. Do not click on play. Do not click on play from start. Okay, it works here because this is a simple example. But for your V6 engine, what's going to happen is it's going to show you good, and it's going to show you a red bar for the entire thing. What you have to do is you have to click on that calculator sign. So go ahead and click on that calculator sign. Great simulation, rotation, explode. Collapse. Perfect. I get the idea that you know how to do this. Move on. Okay? Any questions so far? So how do you create an AVI file that you can put on social media websites and be so proud of it? <laughs> There's a floppy disk here. Okay? You guys know what a floppy disk is? Just kidding. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> They should honestly go through some like revamping of icons and like use the flash drive. So if you click on the floppy disk, okay, do not render in HD. Okay, if you render in HD, your file is going to be like two gigs. I'm going to give you a flash drive to pass around because you're going to give me those files in soft copy. That is two gigs. So unless you're selfish enough to take all the space on the flash drive. Don't render it in HD. You can do it on your own. You can use that for your own. But for me, just give me a really low quality one. But if you go by the standard that they give you here, then I'm fine. Over here, you can specify the height. So sometimes if your parts are exploding outside of the screen, you can specify the height of the window, for example. Um, and you can choose from possible options here. OK? Now, if I click Save, here's your compressor. Choose 85. Because Solix will try to optimize it for you. So, okay, 85 is good for me. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to run through it really quick. And it's going to generate an AVI file in your folder. Okay, so I know it's here, mini assembly. There we go. Are we good? Yes. Great. Yes. Yes. Just go with the standard. Just agree with SOLIDWORKS. You what? Yeah. Same thing with you? Did it work? Yeah, just hit save. I think that's Apple's message trying to kill Microsoft. <laughs> Stands out like a sore thumb in an engineering room. It's like, <laughs> okay. I actually, I need, I need to show you. I I just got this nice thing. Okay, I'll show it to you in a second. Um, okay. Any questions so far? All right. So we're going to close that. And what we just finished is you should create a folder with your last name, first name, the class that you're in, and then basically the semester S12. Okay? Now inside that folder, you should have seven parts. Those are the pin, flywheel, base, head, piston, crankshaft, and connecting rods. 
Okay? So seven files, not different versions of them, the final one that you have. Now, on mini assembly and final assembly. <laughs> okay, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the eye contact too. He was like <laughs> <laughs> staring me down. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> I thought he was just fed up. He's just ready to take me down, take me out. <laughs> All right. So you should have two assemblies, mini assembly and a final assembly and an AVI video. Okay. You put all these in one folder. You put it on your flash drive. You go to another computer that's not your desktop and you try to open the full assembly. The reason for that is sometimes you might re be referencing a part that is on your desktop. So when you give me the file, if the file is not in the same folder, this can tell me, would you like to find this? And I'm going to say no. And then the assembly is not going to open, and I'm not going to be able to grade it, and you're not going to get points. So you only have one, one shot of turning stuff in. Make sure that you check them before you turn them into me. OK? Any questions? Is this clear? You can search YouTube for like V6 or anything like that. Everyone is so proud of their videos, they actually put them up. Okay, any questions on that? Yes? Do you know how you name the files like that? Good question. You can, name, you can name the files whatever you want as long as I know it's a pen. Like you can't call it like whatever. You can't call it like marker one. Okay, <laughs> tell me it's a pen, right? So I know when I'm opening it's a pen. Uh, so the key idea is once you start the assembly, do not rename the files. If you rename the files, it won't be able to understand what you're connecting to. Sorry, what? <laughs> you're interesting. <laughs> you're just like. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yes. Yes. The three other ones for. The pin, the piston, and the connecting rod, that's the mini assembly. Yeah. Okay? No, no, no. Just, just the base and the head are the only thing that are transparent. Uh, no, just do, them, just do them in the assembly. Yeah, just do them in the assembly. Yeah, it will automatically translate into the video. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the ideas that we have to understand is we have a connecting rod. I don't think they're going to be able to hear me on that one because the mic is not far away. Alright, so we have the connecting rod. We have the pin. And we have Wow, this is really off center. <laughs> well, I'm trying to make a point about being centered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have the connecting rod has a thickness of 0 0.5. The, the pin has a thickness or a length of 1.65. Now, we want to make sure that everything is centered, right, along the midpoint. <laughs> along the midpoint. Um, so this is our center here, and we're going to try to dimension everything from it. So I just showed you how to add a distance mean, correct? When we did the, the base. So if I know this is 1.65 and this is 0 0.5, what is the distance between this phase and this phase? By the way, the morning section was making fun of you for not able to divide and multiply numbers last time. <laughs> what is it? Thank you. It's 1.65 minus 0 0.5 divided by 2. Because you have a piece here, and you have another piece exactly over here. <laughs> Are you becoming like so advanced in math that you forgot how to <laughs> take a symmetry of something? Just try it. <laughs> okay? If you if this is not centered, if this is a bit off, then there's going to be interference between the pin 
and the actual uh, hole of the, where the piston used to go. Okay, so the pin is actually going to be sticking out a bit from each side. Now this is one way of doing it, but as you notice, you cannot really subtract numbers or divide. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to show you another way of doing it. So in case you cannot subtract numbers and you cannot divide, here's how you would do it. I'm going to close this. I'm going to try to do some modification really quick just to make a point. So let's say this is my um, pin and this is my connecting rod. Okay? So th those are the two options that I have. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that they're actually concentric. So I can click on the circumference of this guy, hold down the control key, click on the surface. Over here I can make I can mate them. That should be pretty standard. Everyone should know how to do that by now. If I click on check mark, perfect, I can still move it up and down. So it's not really centered. So my second, my second option is to click on this face and click on this face and try to add a distance in between them, right? But that's not really practical because subtraction of numbers is a very difficult thing to do. <laughs> so what, we, what you can do is you can specify the outer boundaries of each thing. Remember last time when we did the mid-plane, how we selected the outer boundaries? We're going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to select the outer boundaries of this face, of this part, so outside and in, and then outside and in of this part. Okay, so there, notice I selected both both these faces. So now when I hit mate, it will automatically position them in uh, symmetric positions with respect to each other. So for the piston, remember you have those squ uh, square notches? You're basically selecting those two and the outside of the pins and you're lining them all up. Is that clear? What What's just happening is you're creating mid-planes for each one of them, and you're making those mid-planes coincident with respect to each other. <coughs> Any questions? That's a good question. I won't expect you to know that. So. It's too advanced. Okay? We're starting with shapes now. As long as we understand shapes, we're good. Shapes and colors, yes. As long as you understand shapes and colors, we're in good shape. <laughs> All right, any other questions? <laughs>